I even tried holding off so much that I knit a swatch and trust me I never make swatches but hi welcome welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi my name is Ulina and I'm a knitter from Norway and welcome to my knitting podcast here I talk about all things knitting my current project finished project projects I really want to cast on yarn just anything knitting related anything that comes to mind while I sit here and chat with you but as you might notice I'm not in my regular podcasting spot I am currently visiting my parents cabin and since it's Easter and right now I really wanted this week's podcast episode to be filmed here I've spent every Easter for as long as I can remember at this cabin so nothing says Easter quite uh, as much as this cabin to me so I just really wanted to be able to film this week's podcast episode here there is no electricity here and there's no internet here and there is a lot that makes it a bit harder but I was home charged my phone and now I'm here I packed all of my projects in a bag and you have to ski to get through this to this cabin as well but I packed them with me when skiing and got it all here so I'm ready to share them with you but before we get into that I thought I'd talk a bit about my sweater and this is my Mario sweater this is the one with the round yoke it's not quite as traditional as the traditional one where you do sticking and sew in the sleeves and everything I do want that as well but first this one uh, this is the one with the round yoke I made mine in drops alpaca I think it is in it's very peeled I have not de-peeled this and it is a couple of years old but I think this is in the light grey maybe the pearl grey and of course the white for the main part of the um, color work and then I have turquoise for the last part of the color work and the uh, ribbing at the neck and I made this as a school project I think in 2016 maybe so it is a couple of years old I think it's eight years old and I've used this loads every time I'm doing something I think about as very traditional Norwegian I love to wear this so going to the cabin this one is the first thing I pack and if I'm going skiing this is the first choice everything so I've used this loads this is also one of the first like adult size sweaters I've made myself I've made myself sweaters uh, when I was a child but this is one of the first ones I made that still fit and I love it, of course, the Marius. I love that and having some traditional knitting. I have a lot of petite knit and other more modern, maybe, knitwear in my knitted wardrobe. But I love having some traditional knits in there as well. And currently, I think I only have this one. I am looking to get more this year, though. But currently, I only have this one. And another thing I love about this is that I've made family match. So... Every Christmas um, I make sure that we all have mother sweaters that fit and I have this and then the boys have in darker colors they have in dark gray white and navy blue I think also in drops alpaca and also with the round yoke so every year we take our Christmas photos with these mother sweaters and I love that. I love the look of that. And I really want to keep the continuity in it and keep the colors and everything. But I have noticed ever since I started making the mother sweater for my fiance and my son. And I am keep making my son new ones every year or every other year. But I've noticed that I think I prefer their colors. I think this one is maybe a bit too light, you can't see the color work quite as well and in the years since I made it, I, this I don't think I would have chosen turquoise and I am very happy with this project still but I just, every time I look at my fiance's sweater which also fits me, I just kind of want to steal it. I like the colors a little bit more and I like the colors on me a little bit more so what I think I might want to do is to make a more traditional modest sweater 
to wear that has darker colors than this. This is just a bit too light to make a Mario sweater in darker colors. I kind of want to do the original because my friend has done that for her whole family with the original, very traditional Mario's. And that looks so lovely. So parts of me want to do that. And part of me want to do it in like darker colors, but not maybe the traditional. Um, so I really want to make that for myself, but then keep this and the other Mario sweaters for our annual Christmas photos because I don't want to knit new Marius for all of us, I don't think. And I really like that these are the sweaters we use every year and that that just stays the same instead of one year all of a sudden we have new Marius sweaters. But I think that's all about this Marius sweater. It is very well loved and as you can see it has peeled quite a lot over the years. I did get a deep pillar for Christmas this year from my parents, the petite knit one. So I think when I get back home, this definitely has to get depilled. But that's everything about that. And we can move into my current project. And I have some projects this week that I'm so excited about. But we'll start with what I cast on uh, like longest ago. And then we'll move to what I just recently cast on. And of course, my melange sweater, this has become a permanent fixture, it seems like, in this knitting podcast. Um, I talk about it every week and every week it's still not done, but this is it now. And it's never been so close to being done as it is right now. I have finished the body. The body looks a bit weird now because of ripping it is really cinched in but I think once it's blocked that will be pulled out and look nice because I don't want it to be cinched I want it to be like straight but I think uh, that will all work out it usually does and then after that I did do the neckline as well um I think you were supposed to have about 120 stitches for the neckline I think and I ended up with only 110. I think what happened was I did get a few too few stitches around here where it curved around the increase. So what I've noticed when I hold it like this is that I get a bit of bunching in the front. You can see these two like lines happen because of the neck but I think that once this is again blocked and it gets a bit pulled out. See if I pull on it, you can't see it at all. And also the weight of the sleeves will do something about it because this is a drop shoulder. So the weight of the, sh the shoulders will pull it a bit like this. So I think it's going to be fine even if I have too few stitches. I very seldom get exactly the amount of stitches for the neckline as the pattern says because I can't be bothered picking up stitches for the neckline more than once and it doesn't matter as much for the neck as it does for example for the sleeves uh, which I've also started on, picked up two stitches too many on the sleeves but I just knit them together and it worked out. But this is the sleeve, I have done German short rows but those weren't difficult at all. I think you did like four short rows that went by really quickly and I don't think you can really see it at all. The German short rows are way down here. I don't really understand that they can make such a big difference because I think I knit like this much longer where the German short rows were so don't know if it was really necessary but I've done it. So now I now that I'm past all of that, I'm just doing reg regular stockinette and doing decreases. I think I've done two decreases now and just knitting until I'm happy with the length. I showed my fiancé this and he asked me if I was knitting a sweater for our son because it is looking quite small, but I think it will relax quite a bit. and. I think I've knitted a bit cropped because I didn't want it to be too long and baggy because I am picturing this as a spring and summer 
maybe autumn sweater, especially the colors remind me a lot of spring. So didn't want it to be too long, too baggy, too warm. But uh, as of right now, I'm really happy with this. I have been better at working on it this week than the last few weeks. And now that it's getting bigger, I don't think the marling is so bad. But last night as I was knitting on it, my fiance was watching me knit and he tries to stay <laughs> interested in what I'm doing. So he looked at it and was like, oh, why do you knit with two different skeins? And I said, because to get the colors marled. And he said, and then he said, but why are there so many big splotches of just white and just blue? So if even he notices it uh, and he's not a knitter, I don't know how well that works out. And then I said, I said to him that and it was much more even up here than down here and he could even point out the line where the different was so he could not see it so it is definitely noticeable but he didn't see it on me so hopefully once it's on a body and moving about it won't be that noticeable because I don't want to have a sweater everyone can see there is like a big difference but at least I'm not the only one and you're not the only one who can see it. My fiance could also see this big difference. For the sleeves, I was originally supposed to pull yarn from outside the skein to see if that could help um, with the marling, if that could even it out. If when I pulled from the outside of the skein, if they would tangle together enough for it to even out. That was my plan, but when I picked up stitches for the sleeve, I forgot all about it. So I have done what I always do and pulled from inside and I'm just knitting regularly and it's marling kind of exactly like the body. I think it might be a bit better than the body just because of the smaller circumference, but it's definitely not as neat as the top part of the melange and I don't know how you can get it as neat because I like the look of this a lot more than I like the look of this. This just looks a lot neater even though you can see some streaks where there are more blue or more white but here it is just a lot more messy <laughs> but I've tried a couple of different things and I can't figure it out but even so I am happy with this I am excited to wear it the one time I've tried it on I noticed that you can't really see the difference as much once you're wearing it so now I am finally on the home stretch and hopefully I can at least finish this sleeve till next podcast because now I'm so keen to be wearing this and this was supposed to be my Marsh sweater as well. I'm trying to knit myself something every month of the year. And this was the project that was what I chose what I chose to do for March. And March is almost <laughs> over. And I don't think I'm going to be able to make it because I have other projects I also really want to work on. But hopefully I can at least finish it early April. And I'm knitting it with Drops Flora in denim blue and white, the leftovers from my porcelain sweater. And if you're looking for fingering weight yarn suggestions, I really recommend Drops Flora. It's one of the cheaper yarns uh, out there. It's super warm because it's wool and alpaca and it's so soft and comfortable. And if you mix it with kids silk as well it's just amazing so a big recommendation for me and then the next project that's been the longest on my needles after that is my wedding dress and this week I have actually gotten to knit some of it though not as much as I would ideally want but last we talked I had just connected a new skein and as you can see, that is about two and a half centimeters since I did that. So I have knit about two and a half centimeters this week. I do want to 
make one day out of the week like reserve that for only knitting on this wedding dress because I want to get further and this has really just stagnated here. I haven't gotten past this point in so long so I think I just need to carve time out for the wedding dress and I'm trying to figure out what day of the week would be best and I just can't because I kind of want to knit on this on the weekend but the weekend is the time where we usually do the most other stuff and if we do other stuff I lose knitting time so I want to schedule this for a time where I'll actually have knitting time but I'm just a bit stumped what day would be best but I want to make des designate like one day a week for purely working on the wedding dress and ban all other knitting projects that day because I always have so many good ideas for what I want to knit and what would be fun to knit and great to knit and gift away and I keep having all of these ideas and I don't think it's going to stop so I think the best way to make sure that this actually gets knit on is to just force myself to always knit on it that day and that day only <laughs> knit on this um, but I th I'm very much in between like doing it on a Tuesday or a Sunday I think I think those would be the days I would prefer so I don't know but hopefully by next week I'll have decided and actually have finished this top as well because now I've just been working on it ridiculously long but this is kind of the idea um, I just need to, it to be like 10 centimeters longer so it should be able I should be able to do that in a week because I want to try it on and see if this is even something I can work with moving forwards I have not really been able to try it on properly so I need to get moving because this is just moving along way slower than it should if I'm going to have this finished by my wedding I just need to be better at prioritizing it but this is knit in two yarns that are completely new to me. I'm knitting it with drops, no, not drops, Sonnesgarn Sisu and Sonnesgarn Opaka Fölletra. If it can focus. Because I did not want mohair in my wedding dress. I thought that would be uncomfortable, but I really wanted a second strand to kind of reinforce and not make it too stretchy and just make it have a bit more hold and uh, so I chose the alpaca felutra. I also really wanted to try it out so it was a bit of a, an excuse and then I chose the sisu because this is super wash and it also has a bit of nylon in it and I thought that would be great for wedding dress as well because I'm really worried about this stretching too much and I think both the alpaca felutra and the nylon in the sisu will help me combat that but that's my very little update on the wedding dress and then we can move into the projects that's actually been getting most of my attention this week first up we have the project I've been the most excited about as you might know if you watched me I had a trip trip to Sunnes uh, around the month shift between February and March and I got a lot of yarn at Sandeskarn at their outlet and some of the yarn I got was this red pergint. I think it might be in the color poppy but it didn't have um, the label on it so I can't really tell because this is outlet yarn but this is it and Ever since I saw this, this just screamed at me that I should knit the Ingrid sweater with this. I have been wanting to make my own Ingrid sweater for really long, but especially since I made my sister an Ingrid sweater about a year ago. I really wanted to make one, but I haven't really found a color or a yarn combination or a yarn held by its own that really speaks to me and that I've been sure I want to knit the Ingrid with until I saw this and ever since I've been obsessed with the idea and as you can see this is not a yarn you can easily miss I have seen this like every day all the time and it's just been pulling my attention I've been working on other projects and this has just been pulling my attention 
I tried to say to myself that I really needed to finish the Milan sweater first because the Milan sweater, the poor guy, has been on the back burner ever since I cast it on. There's always been another project I would rather work on, even though I love the Milan sweater, it's just never been my favorite. So I tried so hard to hold off, but then Easter started and I really wanted this to be my Easter cast on and I even tried holding off so much that I knit a swatch and trust me I never make swatches but I made a swatch and it wasn't even to really check the gauge but I just had to start knitting with it and start seeing how the ingrid would look with this yarn. And I think maybe the sun and this bright color is making it a bit hard, but can you see that stitch definition? It's insane. The last time I knit it, I knit the ingrid with Drops Alpaca and Kid Silk, and that is so soft and light and beautiful, but the stitch definition isn't the best, and it's just... There is a lot of direct to that sweater, but I really wanted an ingrid that was a bit more sturdy. This is definitely that, but I had hoped that this would make it easier for me to focus on something else that I would like scratch the itch and it would disappear. It did not, it just made me want to cast on even more. And then when me and my son went to stay at my parents' cabin for a couple of days, I thought that would be the perfect time to start this. And that I think was on Monday. So I started the ingrid, couldn't help my myself, and this is where we're at now. This part with the double knot stitch just went by so fast. You're doing German short rows, which I love, and you're seeing the progress. And I think double knot stitch also looks really neat. And then there's just ever since that, there's been something new happening. You have this yarn over here. You have this crisscross here, which I kind of hate, to be honest. I've hated them ever since I did the first mocha slipover for my son. And then I did this for my sweater, for my sister. And then I did the mocha for myself. And I've just never been able to get over how much I dislike doing these crisscrossy things. But honestly, with this yarn and how good they look with this yarn... I have been really enjoying it. They just really stand out. I think every other sweater I've been doing this with, it's either been like a superwash merino where it kind of like isn't as structured or it's been with mohair, which kind of takes away from it. But it's just been great to work with Pergint. I am obsessed with Pergint after working on this. And then you have these yarn overs again and then just double ribbing and I love double ribbing and then all of a sudden the back yoke was finished and I have been so tempted to just throw all of my other plans out the window and abandon them for a couple of weeks and just knit on this and I am hosting a knit along right now and some of the people in the knit along are working on the Ingrid as their only project and I'm so jealous I just want to do that as well but I have held off starting on the shoulders because the poor melange really needed its neckline and to start on the sleeves so I have been able to keep myself away from this but I think that since I've finished the neckline now and started on the sleeve that my reward is going to be to do the shoulders and when once I start with one shoulder I'm probably going to let myself do both shoulders and the front yoke, but once I finish the front yoke, I'm going to take another break and go back to work on my other projects again. But this is just so addictive, and especially since you have all of these different parts, you just never get bored. You just, if I do another row, I'll get to try this part of the pattern. If I just do another now, I'll get to do this. So it's just really fun all the time and I have had a blast but that's how far I am right now and this is my Easter cast on and I've been loving this as an Easter cast on 
it is also really good color for Easter I think and this is also something I'm excited to have with me into spring even though I think it might get a bit warm because of the pergunt. Um, this pergunt I've been a bit worried also with the pergunt because last time I used it it was really scratchy when I made my Eva cardigan. But I don't know what this about this pergunt but this has been a lot softer. I can rub it on my face and I still feel like it's a bit prickly but it isn't really as like itchy as it was last time I worked with it. So that's giving me a lot of hope that this will turn out great because it isn't even washed yet and it's this soft. But I think that's everything I'll say about this Ingrid. I could honestly go on for days with how much I love this project and I just I just want to knit on it. I have been staying up late the last couple of days trying to get as much work done on the other project just so I can get back to this sooner. It's just been so much fun and I love doing knit alongs as well where I can talk about what I'm knitting with other people and we're all knitting the same thing and talking about our yarn choices and showing up our swatches and sharing our pro progress, talking about if we find any difficulties in the pattern. I love every part about it and my favorite thing with knitting is the knitting community. So really feeling the knitting community so closely because we're all working on the same thing is just amazing and let me know if you want to be part of it if you want to cast on an ingrid and be a part of it you can knit ingrid slip over the baby pattern the toddler pattern the junior pattern the man pattern the woman pattern all of it if you want to knit any version of it just let me know i have a group chat on instagram where we talk about what we're knitting. If you want to be part of it, just let me know and I'll add you. Um, but yeah, that was the ingrid. Um, and then, as if I didn't have enough projects, I thought, okay, all of those projects are quite big. So I need something small and I just think that Easter is a great time to knit socks. I don't know exactly why I think that. Maybe my mom or my aunt or grandma has been knitting a lot of socks during Easter, don't know. But I just really felt like I wanted to be knitting socks this Easter. And since it's Easter, everyone has time off. We have been traveling to the cabin. We have been traveling to see friends. We have um, eight breakfast at my mother's and father's house so it's been great to have these small little socks with me around because I can just put this in my pocket and whip it out at all times and get a few rows in and this is the first sock these are the Sunday socks by Petite Knit I also got the yarn for this when we were in Sunnes this is also yarn from the outlet but this has um this thing on it. I don't know what you would call it, um, but it has that on it and this is the grey colour. It's perfect. I have been wanting sock yarn in this gauge for some time. It's 20% wool, 20% nylon and I bought yarn. I bought enough yarn, I hope, for both socks for me and my son. This sock is almost done. I just haven't found anything to measure the foot length with yet. But I think it is about done. I'm knitting the size 26 to 27. And this has went so fast. And I've also used less than one skein of yarn. It's been perfect for going around everywhere and just knitting a bit here and there. Except for the heel part. The heel part I'm so grateful um, coincided with it being evening and I can just whip that out without anyone being there to disturb me but both the um, leg part and the foot part is really mindless so it's been a great project to just have with me I haven't really had felt the need to look at the pattern or anything which is also good here because I usually use knit and out for all of my patterns and since I don't have any internet here, I can't use knit and out, so it's great to have some.
projects I don't need to look at the pattern for. Um, I kind of wanted to knit my own socks this Easter because I don't have, I don't think I have any knit uh, wool socks. And I love knitted wool socks. It's the best thing to wear if you're wearing socks, on, I believe. But since the goal with this thing was to have something small, I decided to knit my own socks first and then I'll knit mine later. But hopefully I'll have the time to do it before summer because I really want wool socks and finally have the yarn for it as well. And I have yarn with nylon in. I did make Sunday socks for myself, I think about a year ago, but I made them in drops. Lima and I love them. They were so soft. They were lovely and I used them a ton <laughs> but because I used them a ton I wore a hole through them pretty quickly and I didn't only wear like one tiny hole which I could mend but like the whole underside of the sock just <laughs> unraveled all at once uh, on both of them so I quickly understood that Lima is not a yarn to go for if you're knitting socks. I still have knit quite a few socks for my son using Lima and that works because he now he's running a lot around but when he was a baby he didn't run around at all and then when he was smaller he just walked <laughs> kind of slowly and tried to figure the walking thing out. But I think now that he's walking all the time, it will be good for him to, to have socks with nylon in them. Uh, but those are all of my current projects. And I got them all here with me. And now I think I'm going to go and do the shoulders on the ingrid because I am really excited for that. I also was originally intended to film this podcast while my son was sleeping. When we went skiing here, we really tried to get him to sleep in the... Um, we call it pulk, maybe you would call it sledge. I don't know what you would call it in English. I'll pop in a picture and try to Google <laughs> what it's called. But we did get him to sleep, but immediately once I sat down to start talking to you, he woke up. So. There was a bit of a wait of time before I could start this podcast, but uh, now he's awake, he's outside playing, and I really want to join in doing that as well. So I think I'll stop babbling about now. I didn't finish any project this week because I was too busy casting new ones on uh, and just celebrating Easter, but I hope you enjoyed this episode seeing this little bit of my parents cabin and uh, my knitting projects and, and if you enjoyed this episode please leave a like in the comment and if you want to see more from me please subscribe bye